Hi there, today I'm going to show you how simple it is to get started building a custom integration between Slack and Zendesk. For instance, the integration I've built for our company starts with uh, a message in Slack. I'm going to react to this message and this is what kickstarts the integration. So this will create a ticket in Zendesk in a matter of seconds. There you go. I'm going to reload this. Perfect, the ticket is here. And as you've seen, this replied back with a message alerting the user that a ticket was effectively created on Zendesk. Then if I open this ticket, I'm able to see all the messages, all the information I need here. I'm able to either reply back from the chat here or from a custom field here. So I'm going to submit this and open this again. There you go. And this sent a message to Slack and copy that same message here in Zendesk as well. So I'm able to same thread I have here in Slack. And also I have links to the thread. So I can jump from Slack to Zendesk uh, with this link and back from Zendesk to Slack clicking on any message link. And that's it for today. I'm going to show you how to build this integration that will create tickets in Zendesk after a reaction in Slack and then keep the messages back and forth so people in your support team can keep communicating with your team working on Slack. Hi there, I'm Andres from Connex. We are an integrations and automations agency and we can help you integrate Slack, Zendesk and the rest of your tech stack and automate your workflows. Have an integration need or an automation idea? Click in the link in the description below to book a free discovery call with us and discuss this project that you have in mind. To build this integration, I have set up three simple workflows. I'm going to walk you through all these three. Basically, the first one is to create tickets whenever a reaction is added on Slack. The second one is to bring your messages from Slack into Zendesk as comments. And the third one is to allow Zendesk to send messages back to Slack. Let's go one by one. If you'd like to learn how Zapier works, look in the comments for a Zapier 101 guide. Today, I'm going to focus on the Zaps I already created. So everything starts with a trigger for new reaction added on Slack. The app is Slack, the trigger event is new reaction added, and in the configuration tab, you can select which channel, which reaction, and which user, and or which user you want to monitor. I only want to monitor Zendesk reaction. So this will trigger if any user adds that reaction on Slack at any channel, as I left those other two values empty. Hit continue and then test record. What Zapier is doing here is pulling an existing record of a thread that was marked with that reaction. And by the way, if you don't have the Zendesk emoji, you just need to just find the Zendesk icon and add it on Slack as a new reaction by clicking on this add reaction here. And then there is add emoji option at the bottom. Okay. This is the information that comes together with every thread marked with that reaction. So we have the username, the user Slack ID. We have the channel. This was uh, marked and reacted as well as the message here. So we hit continue and, set, and move forward with this message. The next step is just to create a ticket in Zendesk. So after you select Zendesk as your app, you, the action event is to create a ticket. You connect your Zendesk account. This is how the configuration tab looks like. The subject, I'm using Slack as a prefix, and then I'm bringing the message from Slack so this is dynamic. Every new message will change the subject of the ticket. To bring that message here, you need to click this plus button on the side and select the variable you want to bring from Slack. You can bring more than one variable from there, as you can see. So if you keep adding more and more, you will can construct complex strings to create a more customized uh, subject. I'm going to leave that as it is. You can select assignees, collaborators, so on and so forth. There are so many fields you can select from uh, Zendesk. 
I'm going to focus here in the first comment or description where I'm bringing again the same message again and then also the link to the Slack thread. This is the syntax so you need to open with square brackets the message, the text that you want to show and then in round brackets you put in the link that you want to point to. So here I just want it to say link to Slack thread and then I'm using the message permalink here in the round brackets. That's it. So to make it one more important thing here is this external ID field. If you ho hover over the name, you will get a description. This is an ID you can use to link Zendesk support tickets to local records. By local records is the ID of that thread in Slack. Every thread has um, an ID and we are going to store this thread ID, which is the message TS, is a timestamp to refer back in the future. So when you are sending messages back and forth between Slack and Zendesk, we can match the ticket and the thread using this uh, message TS. Cool. Okay. So the next steps is not mandatory. I like to give users a visual confirmation that something is going on, something is working. So what I'm doing here is sending a message back to Slack, confirming that a ticket was created. So the next step is again, Slack as the app, send channel message, hit continue. The channel, we can make it static, but I want this to be dynamic. So if you invoke this from any channel, uh, this will reply back on that channel. So what I'm going here is you need to select custom on this side and then bring in the channel ID as a value here. The message, I'm doing something similar here in Slack where I want to send a link back and the way to construct links in Slack is a little bit different. So you need to use these other brackets and then with this bar, I'm not sure how this is called, <laughs> but uh, in the first part, you input the link. And in the second part, you put the text you want to show up uh, and display on the screen. So I'm bring, bringing here the URL of the ticket and the message says ticket number. And I bring the ticket ID, which is the ticket number in Zendesk. Just to give you a visual representation, this is how it looks like. Okay, this is it for creating tickets in Zendesk. Now let's look at sending messages from Slack into Zendesk. So let's edit this zap to get into details. And the trigger in this case is every time there is a new message process to channel in Slack. You connect your account, hit continue, and you configure. So for this specific trigger, you need to select the channel you are listening to. If you have more than one channel you want to make this work for, you will need to create a different zap for each. That is not scalable if you have hundreds or thousands of channels in Slack. I don't, I'm not sure if you can create thousands of uh, channels like, but if you need this to be dynamic, there are workarounds that we can implement to make this happen. So if you are facing scalability issues, feel free to reach out. We are able to find a workaround for you. I'm triggering off of bot messages here as well and this will become handy in the next step I'm going to explain uh, soon. So hit continue here and again what Zapier here is, does is pulling an existing record so we can play and use these variables in the subsequent steps. I'm going to hit continue with select record and uh, what I want to do here is to every time there is a message in Slack I want to add that as a comment to the ticket in Zendesk. If you look into the configuration to this action event, add comments to ticket, you will find here that we need to select the ticket ID as the first option. So before adding the comment to the ticket, we need to find that ticket ID. And for that, there is a specific action in Zapier. If you hit continue here, this is the configuration. So the type of search, we need to be do a search API query. And then we are using, do you remember the thread TS, which is the ID of the thread? Well, we are using that to find tickets in Zendesk. And uh, you just need to add as a query, external underscore ID, semicolon, and bring in the ID by again, clicking this plus button on the side and looking for the, not this TS, but the thread ID because each message has a, an ID as well. But what we're looking for, what is important is the thread TS ID. Hit continue, test step, and this will get back the ID of the Zendesk ticket. Now we have everything we need to create a comment 
and here I'm select you need to input the ID of the ticket again and the body of the message. I'm bringing the text and constructing the link using the Zendesk syntax. Hit continue and we are done. So after hitting publish, this zap will start working. And by the way, you need to publish your zap to make them work and have this integration working for you. Last zap is updated ticket. So up to now, we are bringing everything from Slack into Zendesk. This is the zap that will bring something from Zendesk to Slack. Whenever there is an updated ticket, I'm sending a message in Slack. Now let's go into details about this zap. Edit. There you go. So the trigger event is updated ticket in Zendesk. You can choose a single organization if you want to monitor uh, an organization. I'm leaving this open. So this will trigger off of any ticket update. And this is how the record comes from Zendesk. Right? We have all these fields. So somewhere in here says has the comment, the subject and the description of the updates of the latest updates as well as custom fields. Now two, here's how I envision this to work is whenever somebody edits this field in Zendesk, this enables them to send a message to Slack. To create a custom field, you need to go into the admin section of Zendesk and adding this as a custom field. And once you have that there, you can see that on Zapier as well. So the usage here is whenever I'm typing in here something and I hit submit, this will be Zapier will pick this message and send it to Slack and give a visual confirmation back that this was sent to Slack by adding a prefix at the beginning of this message. Now the zap, the second zap that we, we saw will bring the message from Slack back into Sendesk. This can sound a little bit complicated but this is how I wanted to show you today. So to keep it as simple as possible for you to implement. So in a minute, this will be, there you go. The message was sent and the custom field here in Zendesk was updated with this prefix. And this message from Slack was stored back into Zendesk. So we can have the full history and the full thread in Zendesk as well. So if you go back to the zap, this updated trigger will trigger off of any update you do to the trigger. So what we are doing here is we're filtering because we want to listen only to whenever you update the custom field to send message to Slack. So I, in this filter, I'm a couple of conditions here. So move forward only if the message exists, if the custom field is not empty basically. And then also if the text doesn't start with send because otherwise this will keep sending messages back to Slack. The next step is just to send the message to Slack. And again, we need to select the channel. I bring in here the message and a couple of customization fields here. I'm calling this bot Zendesk and giving it an icon. So it looks better on Slack and it shows that this is comes from Zendesk. The rest you can leave it as it is, but here an important thing is you need to input the thread ID. And as we store this in Zendesk already, we can bring it this and say, whenever you send this message to Slack, be sure to add it as a message within a thread and not as a new message in Slack. This is the important bit here of this action. Hit continue. And the last step, what we're doing is updating Zendesk to add a prefix to the custom field. So the first thing we need to do is select the ticket and we bring the ticket ID used from step one from trigger and somewhere here, there you go. The message, this is a custom field. We add this sent prefix that will allow us to break this zap when it's triggered again. And that's it. This is how you start building a uh, Slack Zendesk integration for your organization. As you've seen, Zapier is pretty customizable, so you can adapt your zaps to your specific needs and customize workflows. For instance, a couple of ideas we can explore in a discovery call is how to bring comments from Zendesk into Slack instead of using this custom field and how to bring ticket updates as whenever you 
update the ticket status and you close it, you may want to send notifications on Slack as well. So people can know about the status of a specific ticket. Finally, then maybe you want to bring users and know who is sending comments back and forth. We can include the names of the users that are sending messages back and forth. And finally, if you're using uh, other tools beyond Slack, like Microsoft Teams or a project management tool as well, we can integrate those in Zendesk in a similar fashion. That's it. If you like this, give me a thumbs up, leave a comment. And if you got stuck or want to explore further integrations and automations, book a free discovery call. We're more than happy to support you. Cheers.